So you may be able to see here all of this yellowy brown kind of stuff attached to this piece of wood. But what it actually is, is fungi. So uh, that's exactly what we'll be talking about today in this video. And we'll be looking at how this fungi breaks down um, pieces of pretty much woody material and returns it to either soil organic matter or into the um, fungi biomass itself. We'll be talking about the benefit that brings um, to our soil and our farm and how we can also uh, increase the fungi on um, our farms. So you can see here, the, the piece of wood was lying down like that. So it had contact with the ground from underneath and pretty much it's starting to um, break down the um, woody mass from underneath. And you'll also be able to see on this side, the fruiting body of the fungus on the wood just here. So that's actually uh, the fruiting body. The uh, fungi would be spread all across, all within um, this piece of wood and be actually decomposing it um, from the inside and from the bottom. Anyway, stay tuned to um, see the whole video. My name is Till Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained. One of the most important microbes in our soil are soil fungi. So fungi are a, a group of organisms that are different to plants, animals, bacteria. They're a totally different uh, group of uh, organisms. Now fungi are heterotrophic, which means they get all their energy and nutrients from uh, consuming other uh, microbes or organisms. Whereas plants make all their energy uh, themselves from taking light and carbon dioxide and water, fungi and other um, heterotrophic uh, organisms, they take their uh, energy and nutrients from other organisms. Other organisms or other um, molecules in, the, in, the, in their environment. So fungi form structures called mycelium, uh, and these are thread-like uh, structures that run mostly uh, under the ground, uh, in our soil, or inside um, organic matter. And then every now and then when fungi want to um, pretty much reproduce, they pop a little uh, reproductive um, organ above the ground, such as um, a mushroom head, um, which is represented here, and it releases spores and then these spores pretty much um, distribute across um, a land and then they place the spore and then um, some mycelium grow. Right. So that's that's rough, uh, that's a little bit about uh, fungi. Fungi can mostly be separated into three separate groups, or at least in the context that we're talking about. So first are the decomposers. Now this is a really important function for our uh, fungi as they break up high resistant organic matter. Now these include cellulose, protein and lignin, all of which have a high resistance to being decomposed. So bacteria, they don't really break down these type of compounds. They stick to more um, simple structured um, compounds that are quite easy to break down. So that's why um, fungi are really important in the breakdown of organic matter. So the fungi will break down this um, woody, hard to break down substances and they'll convert it into fungal biomass so they'll eat it and then grow their own bodies um, pretty much essentially locking away that nutrients in their body. Now this is important so that we don't lose um, our nutrients um, and then they also form soil organic matter which we know from uh, some of the other videos is really beneficial for our soil. So essentially we're storing all this uh, nutrients in our soil uh, as well as building up our soil structure um, through increasing our soil organic matter and hence soil organic carbon. So the next group we can classify fungi in are our mutualist fungi. Now an example of mutualist fungi are mycorrhizal. Now these, everyone loves these because they support our plants so much. So firstly they help our plants find nutrients and then secondly um, they actually hide plant roots from um, uh, pathogens and pests and that's they, so they pretty much form around um, our plant roots and almost hide them from uh, other uh, pathogens and um, pests. So an interesting uh, thing about these type of fungi is that they grow with our plants and so the plant benefits and our fungi uh, benefit from this relationship. So this is a really important function uh, for increasing our I guess plant uptake of nutrients and protecting our plants uh, from disease and pests. And so the last group are our pathogens. Now we don't really want these too much in our soil. We mainly want our fungi for these two groups. 
but pretty much our pathogens can cause disease uh, in our plants and they can do this by decomposing live plant tissue. So instead of decomposing um, organic matter, so dead plant tissue, they um, attack and decompose living plants. Now this can be um, combated by increasing the biodiversity within our soil and pretty much what that will uh, what will happen is that micro, uh, our, our good microbes and our good fungi will pretty much outcompete these pathogens as well as protecting our plant roots um, by pretty much growing around them. So now that we know what fungi are and the type of groups that they fall into, let's talk about the benefits. So firstly, they decompose the woody organic matter like we talked about uh, before. Um, this allows, uh, I guess, the uh, lock up of nutrients and so they don't um, get washed away or, or leached away from our soils. Uh, with this we also build up the fungi um, biomass which then when the fungi die or are uh, eaten by nematodes which we will talk about I guess in uh, future videos, um, it releases these nutrients slowly to our plants. Next is that some of these nutrients are um, release to our plants so we increase the access to nutrients but also with the mutual relationship with um, our fungi and plants we can also increase the uptake of, um, of nutrients and so pretty much our plants are going to um, receive more and there's going to be a bigger pool of nutrients in our soil. Next is plant resistance to pests and disease. This is massive. Um, we, we because of this, we don't have to apply as much um, insecticides or, um, or and fungicides to protect our plants. We can, we can just use um, a natural, I guess, competition between our microbes to control population numbers. And then finally, we're going to build soil structure um, because we're going to, so our fungi, they're going to pretty much hold our um, aggregates together increasing our structure which will then have a flow on effect that will increase the water holding potential of our soil um, and also increase uh, or improve the drainage so overall fungi there's um, there's not many I guess negatives to it where we're only going to be gaining positives uh, and this is ultimately going to um, benefit our soil and our enterprise so now that we know that we really want some fungi in our soil and we want to maximize that to reap all of these benefits, how can we actually increase our fungi numbers? So firstly, we're going to um, pretty much want them to live in our soil. And so we can do this by increasing or making the habitat more preferable for our fungi. So fungi love to live in organic matter. That's what they feed off. Uh, they, they love living in, I guess, a nice, safe environment. Surrounded by, our, surrounded by our plant roots. So that's exactly what we want in our soil. We want lots of plant roots, lots of um, organic matter for these fungi to uh, have lots of food and to grow. Now, they don't like uh, lots of sunlight um, such that the, the UV light from sun can damage them. So we want to make sure we have lots of ground cover. Um, and we, have, well, we also have another video about uh, plant cover and the benefits of that. So check that out. But in this, um, sense we want lots of ground cover to protect our fungi next we want to make sure that our fungi aren't being i guess ripped apart or the mycelium that spreads through our soil isn't getting cut up so we're going to reduce our tillage and we can do that with uh, no till or reduced till um, type of uh, strategies and so this will promote uh, growth and, and will prevent i guess setbacks of our fungi next we're going to reduce um, fungicide. Now this kind of makes sense if we if we want to promote fungi, we don't really want to be applying uh, fungicides which will kill them or, or hurt them. Um, now this is more in the sense of broad spectrum fungicides, which if, if you apply across a whole paddock, it will damage all your fungicides. If you do have a um, say a, a, an outbreak of um, rust or some disease like that, applying a, um, a fungicide like that is almost a necessary evil. Um, that you have to do, unless you set up a really good IPM or integrated pest management to control those, uh, which we should always be looking to do. But if a population of, um, of pathogens get out of control, you know, um, insecticides or herbicides or uh, fungicides are a great way to control that. We just have to understand the negative impacts that they will bring. And if it's in fungicides, it will damage our uh, fungi in our soil. And lastly, we want to make sure the plants that we have in our field really support uh, the fungi growth. 
So some of these can be legumes and grasses. Uh, the roots on these uh, fungi love to live in between them uh, and amongst them. And so having plants that they really like will um, pretty much want them to live in our soils. Now fungi um, and all our beneficiary fungi naturally live within our soil. However, if we have degraded their soils and they're um, almost unlivable, and there's not many, like there's a low population of fungi in them, what we can do is to buy a um, pretty much a pre-mixed bag of, uh, of fungi inoculated soil, um, and we can spread that across our uh, paddocks or our fields to increase or introduce different populations. But essentially what we can do is buy inoculated soil or, um, or grain and, and put it across your, your farm. Um, otherwise you can make compost, you can make your own compost or compost tea, which will have your fungi and some other microbes in there. Um, anything really to introduce and um, get the, the numbers there. But other than that, you've got to make sure that they have the environment that they want to live in. Otherwise they're going to die off or, um, or not want to be there. So just because you're, you're pouring um, really rich, micro-rich compost tea across your field doesn't mean that they're going to stay there or survive. We want to make sure we're doing all these things to really um, make the micro, um, really make the fungi want to live there. So there we have it. That is everything we need to know about fungi. They are pretty much an amazing organisms that we want in our in our um, soils, and we really want to make sure that we're uh, suiting our soil to their growth and development. So for every farmer, gardener, or hobbyist that want to improve their soil, let's focus on fungi uh, and maybe more broadly our microbes in our soil so we can really reap these benefits. Uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, we've got a number of other videos on plant production and animal production and a lot on uh, regenerative agriculture, which um, I guess understanding our um, soil fungi and um, soil ecology is really at the heart of um, improving our soil and our farming enterprise. And this is all um, what we guess, I guess we term um, regenerative agriculture. So I hope, I hope you like this video today. Uh, if you do, make sure to subscribe and like this video so you can um, get updates on our next videos. My name is Till Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained.